Jahin everybody, we meet again today on the security update for important events that affected India's security since last one week. We will cover the news as well as try and analyze as to what it meant for India's security and what steps India took, undertook uh, to ensure that our national interests were protected. The first most important event that is happening today as we uh, go live is that the SCO meeting is taking place in Samarkand. SCO stands for Shanghai Cooperative Organization. And this meeting is there for three days. Today is the third day of that meeting. And a lot of important bilateral meetings have taken place between India's Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and Russia's uh, Prime Minister Sri Putin, in which it was said that Indian Prime Minister brought it out that uh, war is not a solution to today's problem. The war must end. It is causing a lot of harm to everybody involved in the war. Also, there was some meeting, uh, there were other meetings with uh, the other countries such as mm -hmm. uh, Uzbekistan, etc. So that is a good news. But what has not taken place up till now, uh, which some analysts were saying that this meeting will take place, was the meeting of the Indian Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi with the Chinese Prime Minister Xi Jinping. It, uh, India has made it very, very clear till the time the boundary issue is resolved, there is going, uh, going to be no relations like normal. So the meeting with Xi Jinping has been awarded. Also, the Pakistani Prime Minister Shahabas Sharif is also at the SCO meet, but a meeting is not taking place with him because there is no point of wasting our time in meeting Pakistan because Pakistan, I have always mentioned, is a table of zero and very little comes out of Pakistan uh, even when you meet the Prime Minister. Best, the state is ignored. Of course, we protect ourselves against their terrorist activities, but more important is to use our diplomatic clout with other countries so that we can improve economic and strategic cooperation with them, thereby helping our economy to prosper. So Shanghai Cooperative Meeting, uh, uh, very briefly, I have covered it. Uh, also, what uh, needs to be understood is SEO or the Shanghai Cooperation as it stands is a very clear indication that this is against West, uh, Western world, meaning against Europe and USA. So some people ask, then why is India participating in this meeting? It is simple. Any alliances, uh, any, uh, uh, any alliances with any nation is always good because we can benefit either from economic point of view or from the point of view of strategic cooperation or from the point of view of defense cooperation or from the point of view of many other aspects. So therefore, it is not as if uh, just because we have joined SCO means that we have gone against the USA or Europe. That is not the case. We are very, very clear. We seek what is called as the strategic autonomy. And therefore, we will be present in all the meetings and tell them very clearly as to what are the subjects that are important to India. For example, cooperation as for terrorism is concerned is very, very important. Economic cooperation is also very important. Uh, also, the cooperation in the, in the energy field is very important. What we must understand is, ever since the, uh, uh, the Ukraine-Russia war started, our cooperation with the two opposing sides, as far as the energy cooperation is concerned, has increased drastically. I repeat, drastically. Our uh, import of crude from Russia has increased sixfold. I repeat, sixfold. Our, uh, 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 our getting crude from America has increased threefold. Also, we uh, refining the Russian crude and supplying Europe and uh, many other countries with refined products such as petrol and diesel has increased three times. So therefore, it is very, very clear that joining any, uh, any, uh, uh, any organization, joining any alliance uh, uh, always helps you to, uh, let's say, fulfill your own national requirement. Now we will talk about some other important issues that took place. First is about the Facebook or the social media. Now Facebook social media claims that any post which fuels religious violence will be removed by them. But this uh, under the name of doing it automatically, Facebook, Twitter and many other platforms are not removing 
post which fuel religious violence immediately so this is definitely a serious security threat and must be tackled what we need to tell all the social media platforms including twitter which has gone to the court against the indian government's ruling that let us be very clear if you want to do business in india you have to be responsive to india's security concern if you don't behave then we may push you out of the country and the loss is going to be yours we just have to twist this social media platform so that they understand as to what are india's security need the second important portion is with regard to an tri uh, patriot peace pact which uh, the assam government the union government has signed with eight tribal military outfits in assam in the presence of the indian home minister and the state chief minister shri himanta biswa sharma now this has been signed nearly 10 years after the peace process started which are these eight rebel groups well they are who's who birsa commando force adivasi people's army all adivasi national liberation army adivasi cobra military of assam santhal tiger force acdba bcf apa aa and la acma stf there is a large number these people had actually uh, laid down their arms in 2012 and uh, then they were staying in designated camp what we must understand is any militant outfit which goes in for a cease fire uh, then is transferred into what is called as designated camp where they are supposed to be staying now by signing this agreement uh, it has become very uh, important that now almost all the terrorist groups all the hardliner factions have signed the peace agreement with government of india except two one is paresh baruwa's uh, band faction of ulfa you know uh, ulfa we know it's an assam based terror organization and second is the kamthapur liberation organization rest is anybody and everybody has uh, now come on the peace mode so this will ensure that the northeast will prosper now and also there are high level meetings which uh, relate to the boundary dispute between assam and arunachal pradesh which are also going on if this happens all the infighting between the states will reduce to zero and everybody in the north east instead of going in for insurgency instead of going in for violent activities will focus on nation building lot of roads and communications has improved in the north east now so therefore it is very easy for everybody in the north east to uh, export whatever they produce be it fruit be it horticulture be it tourism to the rest of the country so peace in the northeast is definitely good because it will make the northeast prosperous and uh, the peace here is also equally important from india security point of view because remember northeast shares 98% of their boundaries with countries like china myanmar and bangladesh and just 2% of the boundary with rest of india which is basically the siligodi corridor uh, which is a narrow strip of land which connects the northeast with rest of india so peace here is always welcome the next issue relates to external sec uh, security and here we, the most important thing is that we are making uh, uh, going in for atmanirbhar bharat we are making things in india Uh, and we are making things in india for rest of the world so the what the government or the ministry of defense has done is the target of defense exports uh, worth 35000 crores has been fixed for 2025 35000 crores for 2025 now this is very ambitious we are going to export military equipment and technology uh, to various countries and remember as far as year 2021 and 22 were concerned our exports were worth 13000 crores now imagine jumping from 13000 crores to 35000 crores is definitely will be a good achievement and we must uh, we, we must do it now what has happened today is that the global interest in the weapons and the equipment that india has to offer is only increasing everybody knows that brahmos missile is being exported to philippines this is also opening doors for sales to various other countries also we know that malaysia is negotiating today with india for the tejas fighter uh, so therefore indian exports are really going to rise now if you look at the world market where does india stand now usa 
Russia and France control 39%, 19%, and 11% of the global sales. China has a share of 4.6%. India initially was importing 70% of equipment from outside. Now today, we are at 23rd as far as exports of weapons are concerned, which means Indian defense industry, especially the private sector, has come up in a long way. And now we are participating in the global chain supply significantly. And what is more important is half of our exports are going to the leading manufacturers in USA. And now the most important challenge which is there in front of the Indian industry is to ensure that we produce goods at a competitive price. Uh, we uh, ensure that their quality is good and we uh, sign what is called as items of uh, we sell items which are the high value items and what is high value item big uh, aircraft guns tanks etc remember uh, commissioning of Vikram for the uh, at the first indigenous aircraft carrier was a big milestone that is definitely good and also the Indian Navy launched a third uh, Mirguri class of guided missile frigate which was very important. Taragiri was also a state-of-the-art homegrown project, which is also very important. So therefore, the Indian defense industry, both private and public, is doing well. However, they need to work hard so that we remain competitive at an international level. The next issue relates to food security. A new scheme that Indian government has decided not to allow export of tukda rice, you know, meaning broken rice. Remember that uh, government has uh, imposed an export, uh, 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 put an import duty of 20% on export of non-basmati rice. India today is one of the world's biggest rice exporter, accounting for 40% of the global trade. Now, why have we suddenly decided to stop the uh, uh, export of uh, broken rice? Simply because of two reasons. One is there's a drop of about uh, a drop in the production amounting to 10 to 12 million tons, uh, uh, which is predicted because of deficient rainfall in the rice producing states such as Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, uh, Odisha and West Bengal. And also the domestic availability of broken rice has been a concern because of surging global demand. Remember, between uh, of April and August this year, the exports of broken rice have increased by 4,000%. I repeat, 4,000%. And who is buying it? It is China which is buying it. Why China buying it? Because there is an acute food shortage as far as China is concerned. China is not a traditional buyer of Indian rice. But because of their own problem, they are buying it. And maybe they are helping Pakistan also by buying things uh, from India and ultimately selling it at a profit to Pakistan. So therefore, this will mean that prices in our country will go up. Now between the rice growers and the Indian public, obviously the public is important. We don't want the prices to rise beyond the point. So therefore, we have decided to ban the export of broken rice. This is uh, definitely a correct decision and this will ensure that our prices do not rise. The next issue concerns Pakistan. We all know Pakistan's economy is in dire straits. And Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahabaz Sharif uh, uh, gave an interview to a newspaper called Dawn in which he painted a very bleak picture of in, uh, country's economy. He said that even the most friendly countries of Pakistan, the moment they got a call from the Pakistani Prime Minister or anybody in the Pakistani establishment, they get scared and they think that Pakistan is going to beg for some money. So everybody thinks that Pakistan is a beggar, not capable of uh, feeding their people themselves. Uh, while this is true, but does it mean that Pakistan is going to behave, it is going to maintain good relationship with India? No. In fact, one would remember some time back, uh, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shahabaz, uh, I stand corrected, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto went to meet the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund and Instead of asking for an economic aid, which he badly required, he raised the Kashmir issue there. Pakistan is so obsessed with Kashmir that they spoke about Kashmir 
at an economic forum instead of getting their loan sanctioned. So therefore, one can make out as to how desperate Pakistan is. Come whatever may be the situation, Pakistan's obsession with Kashmir is not going to reduce. The next issue is with regard to 17th of September, that is today, is called as the Hyderabad Mukti Sangram Day. I repeat, Hyderabad Mukti Sangram Day. What does it mean? It means on this day in 1948, the state of Hyderabad, which, which basically today is the state of, uh, let's say, Telangana and also Andhra Pradesh, joined the India uh, joined the Indian uh, nation. Now remember, Nizam, who was the ruler of Hyderabad at that point of time, wanted to remain independent. He wanted to have an independent state, and his army, consisting of Razakars, were creating a lot of pop a, a lot of problems for the people in the state. They were looting, raping, killing, etc. And Razakars were, uh, I mean, very, very violent people. Now, Sardar Patel, who was the Home Minister of India at that point of time, quietly told the Nizam that you better come uh, inside India, otherwise we are going to use our strength. And uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, without asking Pandit Jawala Nehru or the President, the, uh, told the Indian Army to march inside uh, Hyderabad. The Indian Army, led by Major General J. N. Choudhury, uh, uh, went, into, uh, uh, went into Hyderabad. Uh, there were a few places where some action took place. Nearly 1,500 Razakars were killed. The state forces of Hyderabad, if I remember the figures correctly, 650 were killed. Indian Army also lost about 80-85 uh, soldiers who were killed and about uh, 96 or 97 who were seriously injured and Hyderabad became a part of India. And later, for some time, uh, Hyderabad's military governor was Major General Jain Choudhury. Just for your information, Major General Jain Choudhury later <coughs> rose to become Chief of Army Staff of Indian Army and he was also the Chief of Army Staff in the 1965 war uh, 1965 war with uh, Pakistan. So that's how Hyderabad was integrated into our uh, uh, into our country. Now, next issue is uh, the news from America, in which America has decided that it is going to give F-16 planes to Pakistan, and the Biden government has approved 450 millions of uh, F-16 fighter plane jets uh, to Pakistan because it thinks this is a security assistance by which Pakistan will be able to tackle terrorism. One would remember that it was in 2018 that, uh, uh, that the then US President Donald Trump had suspended $2 billion in the security aid to Pakistan because it has not taken adequate action against the Afghanistan Taliban and also the Haqqani, Haqqani Network terror group. Now, what has Pakistan done in the last four years to convince the international community, uh, community of its commitment to counter terrorism? The answer is sweet nothing. Islamabad needs to explain as to how it has used the existing fleet of F-16 fighter jets to reduce terrorism. There's absolutely no proof that F-16 planes were ever used on the terrorist dens, etc. But maybe uh, USA still feels that Pakistan is a useful state. There are reports which say that Al Jawari of Al Qaeda who was killed in Kabul safe house. Possibly the intelligence for that was provided by Pakistan. And also there are reports which say that Pakistan is acting as a land bridge for providing weapons to uh, 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 weapons to Ukraine. Maybe therefore these are the reasons why Pakistan has once again become important to the United States. Be that as it may be, the fact is Pakistan is a nuisance and uh, Pakistan sponsored terrorist groups like the Jaish e Mohammed, Lashkar e Taiba are targeting India. And in fact, anywhere, everywhere in the world, when a terror attack takes place, you find that the roots are inside Pakistan or inside Afghanistan. So therefore, Pakistan is going to be a nuisance as far as we are concerned and we need to put uh, diplomatic pressure 
on USA and tell them for God's sake stop supporting Pakistan. Now next issue is India using its diaspora soft power. Remember that there are more than 3-4 crore Indians who are settled in countries like United States, Canada, Australia, England etc. A latest news says that United States President Joe Biden has appointed 130 Indian Americans to hold key positions in his administration. I repeat, 130 Indian Americans who hold key positions in his administration. Now, this is the best ever representation for any community in America. So, this is the soft power. Not only that, the U United Kingdom has a new Prime Minister called Liz Truss. Now, she has also appointed an Indian origin Suila Braveman, who is going to be the Home Secretary in our cabinet. Also, an Indian American Congressman Khanna has introduced a standalone bill which talks of India in I think the Katsa waiver. That is, uh, uh, India will be uh, allowed to buy weapons from Russia. So, therefore, this three and a half to four crore Indian diaspora, which is spread all over the world, yields great soft power in USA, in Europe and many other countries. We as a country must make full use of this soft power to protect India's national interest in various countries and at various world forums. Now, we have started making a good use of the soft power of the Indian diaspora. The next issue is countering Chinese hybrid war. Uh, we have been talking about it. China's hybrid war, China's multi-domain warfare, China's, uh, 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 let's say, unrestricted warfare, China's uh, gray zone warfare, many, many activities. Now, we will cover three, four of them in today's uh, presentation. First is, uh, China started cracking down on various activists on the social media because the Winter Olympics are due in 2022 in a short while. Now, there's a lot of dissent against the Chinese Communist Party in China be it in Tibet, be it in Xinjiang, Inner Mongolia, Hong Kong, even mainland China. Now, we must utilize this dissent to project true picture of the Chinese Communist Party and their dictatorial attitude towards its own people. Mind you, the number one enemy of Chinese CCP are their own people. This must be brought to the notice of the Chinese people. The next issue is, there have been reports from many countries that whoever bought Chinese hardware, especially weapons, etc., that their weapons are performing very, very, very poorly. So, therefore, it is quite logical that the People's Liberation Army weapon system, which is manufactured in China, is also not up to the mark. The next issue is about the Chinese shell companies. Now, today, Ministry of Corporate Affairs has launched a crackdown on the Indian entities that have been providing dummy directors, I use, I use the word again, dummy directors to hundreds of Chinese shell companies in cities like New Delhi, Gurgaon, Bangalore, Hyderabad, etc. Now, police had arrested people who were doing it. Now, what is a shell company? Shell company is usually inactive, it is defunct, it neither manufactures anything, nor, nor do it offers any product, etc. It is basically a location, basically a name to uh, uh, let's say, hide your black money, hide your unaccounted money, etc. Now, uh, uh, if, if one remembers that in 2016, an important document was published, which was called as the Panama Papers. Now, Panama Papers basically unearthed a lot of global corruption. Now, what is important in that is, it, it brought out that there were something like 40,000 firms which were linked to Chinese, Chinese citizens, which were functioning in various countries. 40,000 shell companies linked up to Chinese citizens, enjoying political clout in the respective countries, including close relative of President Xi Jinping. Now, documents obtained from them showed as to how it was being done. Now, this ongoing investigation that is going on against China must be done thoroughly. It must be time-bound. So that the entire gamut of activities of the Chinese shell companies and their Indian accomplices is laid bare to warn 
the unsuspecting investors in India. China's today ploy uh, is to make India bleed financially. They don't want India to prosper. So reports of uh, Indian employees in touch with their Chinese-based companies through Chinese, uh, Chinese instant messaging app points out to the blatant misuse of technology for, crea for committing economic offenses. So therefore, China is a uh, Chinese investment, Chinese cor corporates, China, China's industry is a threat to India's national security and therefore Indian government has banned hundreds of Chinese apps. We need to take more steps so that Chinese origin fraud and malpractices which is going on regularly is stopped because it affects India's financial security. The next issue is with respect to Chinese terror stand at the United Nations. Now China has once again tried to ban uh, the uh, UN blacklisted Pakistani based Jaish e Mohammed chief uh, Abdul Rauf Azhar who is the brother of Maulana Masood Azhar and China uh, uh, has told you know no, we should not ban them. The boy needs to be told that China is a supporter of terrorism, China is a supporter of Pakistan and China must be punished for their deeds because and in fact the world does not dare to talk about, uh, let's say, the kind of human rights violations that are taking place in China's Xinjiang province where Uyghur Muslims are being persecuted that nobody has talked about. So China is trying to shield Pakistan, which is notorious as the abettor of cross-border terrorism on the global level. So therefore, the onus is on India's diplomacy to tell the international com uh, community repeatedly that Beijing along with Pakistan is supporting global terror and are a constant threat to peace and stability in the whole world. Now next issue is a very interesting issue and this is come out in the Chinese social media. Now Chinese social media has independent foreign uh, policy uh, uh, especially one that is being followed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Sri Jai Shankar. Many in the uh, Chinese strategic community feel uh, that uh, uh, the Modi government has been able to pursue its India's national interest by balancing its relation with the major powers. And they feel that India has done better, much better than what the China has done. Today, uh, Chinese media has brought out that India is using its electronic media, its social media, along with official diplomacy to convey the Indian viewpoint and expose the fallacy of Western arguments. Uh, in fact, external, external Affairs Minister Shri Jai Shankar and his robust interventions at various international forums defending India's position has made him a hero in China. So therefore, the Chinese view India's foreign diplomacy uh, in a very, very positive manner. Now, what we need to understand is we need to keep on building on this. We need to keep on putting pressure on uh, China that should you want to normalize your relations with India, then you have to settle the boundary dispute and you have to stop all your black acts like supporting the insurgency in the Northeast, supporting uh, the Pakistanis, uh, so, uh, uh, let's say uh, also carrying out uh, uh, problems in Tibet, etc. Uh, and uh, China has to be made very clear that India will talk to China on its own term. Ch India will participate in Shanghai Cooperation uh, uh, SCO to protect India's interest and not to become, uh, uh, let's say, just a footmat as far as SCO is concerned. So therefore, what all that one can say now is that India has done extremely well in last one week to ensure that whatever security challenges that came up during the week, we have been able to uh, full, uh, protect them well and India has protected its national interest in a very befitting manner. Thank you and Jai Hind.